Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme for today's video is meals that we made for ourselves when we were in college because we didn't really have a kitchen then, because right now, I don't really have a kitchen. So let's start. My name is Tere, that's T-E-R-E, -E, and I live in Mandaluyo City in Metro Manila. So the dish that I'm going to talk about is hard-boiled eggs that's cooked together with rice in a rice cooker and then chopped up and then mix it with tomatoes. Dorms in the Philippines, usually they don't allow cooking inside because it's a fire hazard. But you are allowed to bring an electric kettle and a rice cooker. Asian country, rice is life. And I went to an all-girls school and I graduated with a degree in communication arts. It's my mom. My mom who taught me that. When we were growing up, we weren't really that rich. But there were times that we, we really didn't have much and we're trying to save money. We did it probably once a week and I just watched her do it and she just dumped the whole egg, raw egg, in the rice cooker and that was it. And I was like, okay. And every time that I make this in front of my mom, it's a dish that's something that we can do or eat together. So if you're trying to make ends meet and you're trying to save money and also don't have time to cook, this is the perfect dish for you. It has rice, it has protein, and it has vegetables. Although the tomatoes, I think, technically is a fruit, but tomato, tomato. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Make it fancy. <laughs> We are starting with the rice cooker dish from the Philippines and I loved that at the end I was told to make it fancy. Make it fancy. I like that this also was a blend of the tomato in the rice cooker dish and now also the chicken in the rice cooker dish. There's a lot of rice cooker recipes and I'm thinking maybe that it should almost be its own video. Mm. It's just very comforting. Wow, the rice is really good. When I was in college, and look at me, I am bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, I had a microwave in my dorm, and so everything that I cooked was in a microwave. And that was, uh, it was honestly pretty good. We got very creative, I will say that. I wanted to mention the artist behind me today. Her name is Cyan. She reached out to me and shared her work of these beautiful food illustrations, which I felt not only went very well with the channel, but were just a joy to look at. All of her account details are in the description if you want to check her out and support her work. I'm giving this dish 10 out of 10. It really has everything you need for a filling meal. And it's delicious. I'm just like really into these rice cooker hacks right now. My name is Devanshi and I, I, I live in Bangalore which is in um, south of India and the dish that I want to talk to you about it doesn't really have a name I used to just call it ketchup bread bhujia bhujia for those of you who don't know is this Indian savory snack which is essentially just like fried noodles that are just broken down and it's it's eaten with like a lot of Indian dishes just to add some cool crunch to them. The reason why I really like this dish is because it's just super simple to get together. I mean, you just take uh, two slices of bread, you put some ketchup and you add some bhujia on top and the sandwich is ready. Growing up, it was something that my mom would like quickly put together when like she didn't have too much time to make lunches and then I sort of took the tradition forward so when I was in college I would just make it often while I was snacking or just during final season at midnight I guess so uh, lots of good memories and um, I hope you try it and I hope you like the fact that it's it's sweet and savory and crunchy all at the same time I brought a little show and tell for this food. This is the bujia sandwich from India. And first I'm just gonna taste it and then I'll tell you about the props. <laughs> this is funny. Okay, I'm giggling because this is a snack that I've had 
many, many, many times. I would just never think to put it into a sandwich, but I guess anything could be a sandwich if you're hungry enough, you know? And this works. If the bujia interests you, either as a sandwich or just as a munchy little snack because it is delicious, I would also like to recommend Haldi Ram brand spicy chana dal. These are dried and then fried and then spiced chickpeas. And they're not big. I'll show you. Uh, I might need to do a second camera shot, but like, okay, no. I'll just do a second camera shot. Here it is. And we put these out and the bujia out. If you're just sitting around and having kind of like drinks before dinner or you're just kind of snacking around, there's just snacking around. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing at that. That's not even a thing. Okay. They're just really, really delicious and they're very simple and the flavors are so like big and bold and just mwah. Yeah, I know that I'm talking, I'm supposed to talk about a sandwich, but like, these are really good. It's like crunchy bread and crunchy bujia. The whole thing is just crunchy. And I like crunchy. That was a little crunchy for my own good. Hi, my name is Jesper and I live in the city of Aarhus in Denmark. The dish I'll be presenting is called Brannende Kærlighed, which translates to burning love in English. And I mean, with a name like that, what's not to like? Plus, it's got bacon in it, so double woo! Fun fact, Danes bred a pig to have extra ribs so we could get more bacon. Yeah, now you learned something extra today. The dish is pretty simple. It's mashed potatoes, bacon, and caramelized onions. For me, this is the perfect college dish because I like cooking and depending on what I do with each step, I can cook basically for an entire week. I remember making this dish for my grandfather, actually. He lived in the town near my college and it was pretty easy just to swing by and talk to him. We both knew it was something the other liked, so he usually had the ingredients for it in his fridge. I don't know if I'd say it's popular, but it's pretty common, especially among late 20s and up generation. Yeah, millennials. For me, it's a good, solid, hearty meal. It fills you up, not only with the food, obviously, but also a nostalgic kind of warmth, at least for me. I hope everyone's safe out there. Bye-bye. The names for these dishes sometimes. I love that this is called Burning Love. Mashed potatoes, bacon, and caramelized onions? <laughs> sign me up. I did, I did sign up. I mean, I usually think about mashed potatoes as a side dish, not as the main part of the meal, but I'm not complaining. Mashed potatoes when I was a kid was, I think, my favorite food of all time. And as I grew up, I kind of stopped eating it as much, but I don't know why. Maybe like the health industry got into my head and was like, don't eat mashed potatoes. Like, you know, eat green beans. That's it, I'm bringing mashed potatoes back. These are bringing me joy. Mm. Mm. I do love caramelized onions, but boy, oh boy, do they take forever. You think like, oh, what does it need? Like 10, 15 minutes? No, they need like 30, 40 minutes if you're doing it right. It's a lot of commitment to an onion. And I just feel like onions, like you don't want to commit to them like that. You want them to just do their thing and then you get to the rest of the dish. But you know, caramelized onions, they're the whole show. So you really need to take your time with them. You may or may not have noticed that the pan that I cooked with for this video was new and different. It is actually made by Made In. And I really like this cookware company, Made In, because they make 
professional grade cookware that's used in Michelin star restaurants but are also perfect for home cooks. It's not like you need to spend $400 on a great pan. You can get a great pan at an affordable price and you take care of it and you can have it forever. One thing that I'm very slowly transitioning away from is nonstick carbon steel, which is the pan that I cooked with today. On its own, if you season it correctly, it will develop a natural nonstick surface. I absolutely enjoyed cooking with it, which is also why I'm very happy to partner with them and to recommend it to you guys if you're looking to upgrade one or more pans in your repertoire. I have a code and that'll give you 15% off your first purchase and the link is in the description. Hi, my name is Jeannie and I'm from Chicago in the United States. The dish I want to share with you today is my college version of omu rice. Omu rice is a Japanese dish made with fried rice cooked in a savory sauce and then covered with an omelet. I'm not going to offend anyone by saying my version is in any way authentic. It's not. It is the perpetually broke, time crunched Midwestern college students version made with leftover rice, fried kimchi, ketchup, spam, and wrapped in an omelet because an egg makes everything better. This was the perfect college meal for me in that my mom would keep me supplied with giant bags of Korean sticky rice and jars of kimchi and cans of spam. I went to architecture school here in Chicago and it was a love-hate experience. I loved it sometimes and hated it sometimes and took extra long to graduate because I couldn't decide on an actual direction in my life. So kudos to the 22 year olds who have it more together than I did. I made up this recipe when I was remembering visiting my grandmother in Seoul and she would make me ketchup and fried rice and wrap it in an omelet. I added the fried kimchi, which if you've never tried fried kimchi before, you have to try it. It's so, so good. And spam was something we ate regularly at my house. I've never been a great cook. I've always been someone who prefers to assemble food rather than cook food. If you love ketchup with your eggs, which I know is controversial, you can whip this dish together in less than five minutes on a weeknight. I think you'll be surprised at how delicious and balanced it is, even though it has super humble ingredients and it's kind of scrappy, like me. This is the Omarice hack. And if you haven't actually seen what Jeannie was talking about, I'm putting in a clip of Omarice. I can definitely see how this is a bit of a hack because that looks incredibly complicated to make. Wow, the spam fried rice with the fried kimchi is next level. Wow, I wish I had been having this in college. Honestly, at the end of the day, my biggest takeaway from this whole channel is how much I love spam. I had never had spam before. I did this one episode of spam around the world and it was like, Oh my God. And now I just feel like when I go grocery shopping, I just pick up spam because I love having it for breakfast. This is 100% going into the will be making again. It is all of my favorite things combined. And the presentation is just, it's really fun. And eating it together is also really fun. I think I need a new adjective. <laughs> Hi, my name is Katrina and I live in Vilnius, capital of Lithuania. The dish I would like to share with you today is called Grike, Grikukoshe, also known as buckwheat porridge, kasha. It's a very nutritious grain, usually sold roasted, and you could cook it afterwards. It has a very earthy flavor and it has a very, very distinct aroma. If someone is cooking, in the dorm, the whole floor will know about it. <laughs> Most of the children in Lithuania, or adults as well, have to eat griki at least once a week because of their nutrition. They fill you up quickly. They used to be one of the cheapest brains, so they were used widely in institutional, like the army, also schools. You can go a long time on a bowl of griki and it's perfect for a starving student. Because of the mentality that we have from Soviet Union, most of my generation and the generations coming after 
they didn't feel the deficit, the constant lack of produce and of grains. You couldn't just go and buy something. But the mentality stays with you. It's, it's given through my grandparents, it's coming to me through my parents. You had to do with what you had. If you were able to buy a kilo of grike, that means you'll be eating grike for the next week. My personal topping of choice is garlic and broccoli, or if I have forest mushrooms I gathered myself. It's a very easy and very quick meal. I would suggest trying it for the experience and thank you for trying it out. Okay, I have gricke, which is extraordinarily fun to say. Buckwheat is interesting because here in America, buckwheat is actually pretty expensive, but the point of the dish is that in Lithuania, it is not expensive. Mmm. Wow. Yes, there's like this very earthy taste to it. Now, I'm not sure if this is because I didn't cook it long enough or this is just how buckwheat is. There's a little bit more bite to it and I actually like it. There, it's not like mushy and it's not like a big bowl of soft grains. It feels like there's some structure still to each of the, I don't know, like buckwheat pearls, I guess is what we're gonna say. In the recipe that Katrina sent me, and it is in the description, she said, in essence, put whatever you have in the fridge into the buckwheat and like enjoy your life, in essence. The point is to just use what you have. There's not a strict recipe or like things that you have to put in for it to be authentic. So that's why I added some dill and some of this white cheese, cause also yum. I just love feta cheese. I love a kitchen sink dish where you can just put whatever you want in it and it'll turn out. There's something just really lovely about that, you know, no rules. The wild, wild west of cooking. I hope you found something inspirational in this video and leave a comment and let me know what you went to school and studied versus what you do as your career because I'm always very curious about that. I will see you all in my next video.